Hello, my name is Adam Bin, and today I would like to compare the performance of CDI versus EJB. So I implemented a small app and uh, measured uh, the performance using a benchmark, JMH. And um, this is actually an outtake from the um, Java e testing online course. So um, let's see what happens. JMH is also well suited to benchmark Java E applications. I would like to demonstrate uh, you this. And one of the uh, also very frequent asked questions is, uh, you know, the runtime difference between CDI and EJB. So I would like to start with complete new project. And the project is going. Um, I would call the project um, uh, CDI and EJBs. It's going to be a Maven project again. And this just, just would implement the business logic first without the benchmark and then the benchmark. And uh, we have JAXRS configuration, which is nice. And I would like to create a folder called CDI and just put a CDI resource into this folder. I would write it uppercase. And the CDI is going to be request scoped. And the path is going to be CDI. So what I would like to do is to, to implement parallel stacks of CDI and EJBs and see how they perform, whether there's any runtime difference. So request scope CDI, and I would just expose a message with get. And now what I would do, I would like to implement a CDI boundary, which would be request scoped again. So I will annotate all the classes message and a CDI control. And the CDI control would be also request scoped. And I would call it, uh, yeah, CDI control with uh, a method string message. And this would return a And actually, let's implement two, it's even more realistic, CDI A control. And then CDI B control. So we have CDI A and CDI B. And the uh, boundary would like to have both. So we have, we inject the CDAA control and we inject CDIB control. And this is going to be A control. This is going to be B control. And in this, the method, method, we will just concatenate the messages. Control message plus b control dot message so looks nice and of course the cdi resource needs the boundary so it's somehow realistic java e component with one resource boundary and two controls cda boundary boundary and here we just return the message. Okay, looks nice. So I will just to copy this and paste it. And I would rename that to EJB. So I would like just to rename all the classes. So starting with CDI resource, uh, this is going to be EJB. There would be no request scoped instead of stateless. 
So that's the first EJB and the name is going to be EJB resource. And of course, this one, the name would be EJB boundary. So we have EJB and the EJB boundary would be stateless. But the CDIA control would be just a POJO. It's unusual to have EGBs as POJOs. So um, I would just uh, make it CDA uh, A control is going to be uh, EJB control. All we could even make it an EJB. This wouldn't be realistic, but let's keep it this way to make it comparable. And this is going A. Okay, this is EGB control. We have uh, CDI B control, and this is going to be EJB B control. So EJB, and this is also going to be stateless. So now just for debug purposes, I would like to prepend here C for CDI and E for EJBs. So, and now let it run. So let's compile, clean and build. Looks good. I would like to run it. And it's a cold start, so the service starting right now. So and let's double check this. Resources, CDI. Oh, CA looks good. And EJB, EJB. So now we have comparable stacks. And now implement a test. So, um, how to do this? I would like to implement to uh, to, to um, implement a project with um, a, a, as a plain Java project. So um, the same story as before, and the and the name would be CDI and EJB uh, benchmark. And again. What I will need is following. Now I would like to access actually the uh, the server, so I would need the JAXRS dependencies and JMH dependencies. So both are needed. And now let's record a test, and the test is going to be um, AHX benchmark benchmark, and the test is going to be. Uh, CDI and EJBs. Okay, so what we said, we need a benchmark mode. And I would like to use throughput again. This is actually more interesting. And um, what we also will need is the um, context class. And this is a benchmark context. And what is the context this time? So what we need is web target. And this is target under test. And what we also need is init client, which is set up with the default is trial. So double check that. Default trial. So we, there's one setup for the whole benchmark. And what we can do here, or I will need a client first, client build a new client, new client. And the client is going to be executed. And this is with um, our browser, so we just borrow the URI here from the browser and put it here. 
And instead of this, I would like to introduce a placeholder. And I would like to call it component. So um, it is going to be a template. So what we can do right now, we can create a param. And say this is a uh, param, and the values of the parameter are CDI and EJB. So looks interesting. So what you can do right now, we just create the benchmark class, and this um, uh, I will call it execute request. I will have to annotate this with benchmark. And now we can say this. Um, no, we have to inject the um, benchmark context first. And you say here context dot uh, resolve template. And it's going to be component on and the value is provided by the framework. So this is actually very similar to parameterized test. So it will uh, t uh, provide automatically tests for CDI and EJBs. So and this is going to be a component. Um, so looks nice. Like to save it. Uh, we have here. Uh, resolve template and what we get back is the path and I would like to initiate a request and I would like to serialize it, deserialize it in a string. So and if this won't work I get an error. Request get. This is actually what I wanted to express. So one thing is lacking is our uh, build extension with shade, JMH shade. And uh, this uses the plugin. I would just use the plugin with plugins. So uh, looks nice. So we have the JMH again. This is the executable. And now let us CDI and EJB build the project and see what happens. Before I do this, is it saved? So it looks nice. And now let's see whether it works. Jar target jmh.jar. So it is not built yet. Oh, it was wrong project. So I will just run this again. I was not in the benchmark. CDI. Yeah, just double check this resources, EJB. Okay, it works. And now I have to go back to the benchmark. Uh, CDI. Exactly. See the IGB benchmark. Maven clean install. See where that works. So uh, should be in state classes. So what I forgot is important. Um, this has to be marked with state. And I have also to specify What's the scope? And the scope should be benchmark. We can actually share the client across the benchmark. This is our pet threat. This is more re realistic because an application server will be also one client per transaction. So let's do this. And uh, so see what that builds 
So it looks already nice. I would just do like to clear it. Java minus jar target JMH. So, and what I got is 404 not found. Let's just double check that. What's the problem? And this is the problem. So I see also nice feedback with exceptions. So now it looks significantly better. So it will take a while because it needs uh, the warm up phases and uh, for for the different uh, operations. So for CDI and EJB, so it would take uh, a few minutes. As you can see, it and it, it's um, established time is about 13 minutes. So let's see what happens. What you can of course do in a benchmark. So you could uh, specify here. There are lots of annotations. For instance. You can uh, specify the um, the output time units operation per invocation, so you can you can uh, adjust the number of iterations are needed uh, to perform the test. Um, and if you don't do nothing, it uh, usually takes 20, uh, 10 or twenty iterations with a warm warm up phase. In this particular case, you wouldn't need so many warm ups because the server is running in the background anyway. So this JMH acts as a proxy, not as the actual test. What's interesting here, so we get a test which takes about 12 minutes. And uh, with the setup, it could also to take a uh, you know, whole night. So JMH becomes really interesting tool for stress test actually, because we can just uh, set up this way that it runs the whole night and gathers the um, operations per second. And what you get at the end is this distribution of the uh, of the um, um, performance, whether the uh, performance degraded or not, and uh, whether there are any errors. And what you can also do, you can redirect the outputs to a file, which is uh, particularly useful and interesting uh, for benchmarking. And now, now let's let's wait for the results. So what is amazing? Um, EGBs are far uh, more achieve far more operations per second than CDI, which uh, um, which is caused by pooling. So not all, not not on each request, all the resources has to be injected rather than um, on demand. And uh, but what this benchmark uh, demonstrates is how to test Java E applications with JaxOS or any remote endpoint. Um, you could even invoke uh, JSF pages with a simple URI. Um, or, or, or test WebSockets applications in the same same way. So uh, JMH is a really nice benchmark tool, um, well integrated uh, with Java and Maven, and uh, could be also used or misused for implementing uh, of stress tests.